One way that differentials arise is implicitly when you're using differentiation as an operator. What do I mean by an operator? Well, it's time for a side quest. A side quest on operators. That's a word that you may have heard. What does it mean? Roughly speaking, operators are functions on functions. You know, most functions that we work with, they take in a number, they spit out a number. But what about things that eat, that operate on functions? Well, such operators are all over the place in calculus. Consider the differentiation operator d by dx that takes a function of x and returns a function of x. It's an operator, as is the indefinite integral with respect to x. That one's a little bit different. It takes in a function of x as an integrand, spits out a collection of functions. Very soon in our story, we're going to see a new type of operator called E, a shift operator. More on that soon. And later, much later in your journey into calculus, you're going to see this guy. That operator will come up later in multivariable calculus. For now, our focus is going to be on a particular differentiation operator, the operator D. This is not the derivative with respect to x or with respect to anything else. It goes by a couple of different names. You'll see this later on in life as the exterior derivative. But for now, we're just going to call it the implicit differentiation operator. Moving back to our main story, something wonderful happens when you differentiate not with respect to x or y or z or any variable at all. You just differentiate. What happens when you do that? You get differentials. This is not mysterious. You're going to see how this works right away. Let's just differentiate. Let's consider a function x squared plus 3x minus 5. And let's hit it with this differentiation operator, d. What do we get? What's the derivative of x squared? It's 2x dx. The derivative of 3x is 3 dx. The derivative of minus 5 is 0. If I factor out what's in front of the dx, I get quantity 2x plus 3 dx. That is the derivative of x squared plus 3x minus 5 with respect to x times dx. Now, if you were to suggestively divide both sides of this equation by dx, you would get a statement that seems perfectly sensible to you. But if we have a different variable, if we have something like tangent of u cubed, we can differentiate that with the same implicit differentiation operator. And what are we going to get? What's the derivative of tangent u cubed? A little chain rule going on here. We got 3u squared times secant squared of u cubed. All of that times du. So that again, if I had differentiated with respect to u, if I had applied the operator d by du, everything would be cool. Now, where this operator really becomes useful is when you have more than one variable involved. Consider x squared plus y squared. We can simply differentiate that entire expression. What is the derivative of x squared? It's 2x dx. What's the derivative of y squared? It's 2y dy. The summation rule for differentiation means that the derivative of x squared plus y squared is 2x dx plus 2y dy. And that is more significant than it first appears. If we take that one example, the derivative of x squared plus y squared, then we can think about this in terms of the circle. Because of course, x squared plus y squared equals a positive constant. That is tracing out a circle in the plane. One of the things that we use operators for is to apply them to equations. If we differentiate that entire equation, we get on the left the derivative of x squared plus y squared, 2x dx plus 2y dy. On the right, we get the derivative of a constant, 0. And now, now what we can do is simplify that expression a little bit. We get that y dy equals minus x dx. 
And what this is really describing geometrically is how changes in the x and y coordinates are correlated if you are constrained to that circle. If you move a small amount on that circle, what are the changes in x and the changes in y doing? Of course, this is related to the problem of finding a tangent line to that circle at a particular point. And you say to yourself, well, to get the equation of that line, I really want dy dx. How do we get that? Just work with the differentials. If I take the previous expression, divide both sides by y, divide both sides by dx, I get dy dx, the slope, is minus x over y. Hey, wait a minute. Is that legal? Are you allowed to divide by differentials? Sure, no problem. Go for it. If you want to be careful about it, then what I suggest you do is you solve that implicit equation, x squared plus y squared equals c, for y as a function of x, and then differentiate that using the d by dx operator. You'll see that everything works out, and you'll learn a little bit about implicit functions. But that's not all. The implicit differentiation operator is so useful when dealing with related rates. If we consider the canonical problem of the sliding ladder, the ladder that's up against the wall, and it's y units at the top and x units down below, and the ladder has length l, then you get, by right triangles, x squared plus y squared equals l squared. But this ladder is sliding down or sliding up or doing something. What you can do is differentiate, as we have done, to reveal that x times dx equals negative y times dy. So if you know the rate of change of the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate, and you know something about the x and y-coordinates, you can solve for whatever else you need. One of my favorite related rates problems involves a faucet with water that is flowing out of it, and it forms a stream with a circular cross-section. But that cross-section changes as the water is falling faster and faster down below. How does it change? Well, if you assume the flow rate is constant, then what that means is that pi r squared v is a constant, where r is the radius, v is the velocity. Trust me on this one. If you differentiate that equation, the constant goes to zero. You move things over to the other side. What you get is 2 pi r v dr equals minus pi r squared dv, that is, rewriting it, 2v dr equals minus r dv. This is cool. This is a non-trivial problem where you can see how changes in the velocity due to acceleration correspond or correlate to changes in the radius of that stream. That's kind of fun. There's a million such problems that you can do. They are all doable via implicit differentiation.